With the new Ford Mustang finally sitting before us, a walk around is the first order of business. Circling the newest pony, there's no mistaking it for anything but a Mustang. The Al New 2015 model retains the right proportions, with a long hood, a compact and low greenhouse, and an extremely fast, well, fast back roof line. Strong cheekbones and torch sheet metal enhance its beauty, while jawlines on top of jawlines will convey an appropriate sense of terror to anyone who encounters one in their rear view mirror. Sliding behind the wheel, we begin to experience some nervousness, on behalf of the car. You see, this isn't the four-cylinder turbocharged Eco Boost model, or even the rental counter base V6. No, what we have here is what some might refer to as the real Mustang, the V8 GT. More than any other 2015 Mustang, it carries the weight of expectations. Heavy expectations. Yes, the direct injected EcoBoost is a technologically advanced engine and its turbocharger forces enough air through it to embarrass many eight cylinders from a decade ago, but it still isn't a proper V8, no matter how much power it makes or how efficient it is. Read more, 2015 Ford Mustang engines, what you need to know. As for the V8, it's a worked-over version of the outgoing Mustang's Coyote power plant, more specifically a version that saw the stinking Bose 302 serve as its drivability and output bogey. Certified on 93-octane unleaded, horsepower now stands at 435 up from 420 and torque comes in at an ice, even 400 lbft. According to the EPA, Fuel will be burned at a rate of 15 miles per gallon in the city and 25 on the highway with the 6-speed manual, the 6-speed automatic does one better in the city. We saw 17 miles per gallon from this stick shift car. If you fill up using 87 octane, you'll be down on horsepower, by about 1% according to Ford. So it's highly unlikely you'll notice. With a 6-speed manual sprouting up between the seats. The V8 makes very short work of the first three gears. The accelerative rush is such that the somewhat cheesy ground speed label on the speedometer makes some sense, and the needle swings into triple digits very quickly. 0 to 60 miles per hour is accomplished in 4.5 seconds and the quarter mile light stripped in 13 flat. Our Mustang also hit 150 miles per hour in well under 30 seconds. Also, there's no music version of the Daytona 500 played through the speakers in the Mustang, the GT's V8 soundtrack, although more subdued than we expected, it's generated solely by combustion events and not electrons. We came away from this hushed GT thinking about refinement, not tinnitus. The refinement extends to the ride and handling. Even with the 19-inch wheels and Biolay p zeros that come with the GT performance package which also brings a bunch of bracing, abraded brakes, and much more, full details here, the ride feels like a slightly more supple Boss 302. Some credit must go to the new Integralink independent rear suspension, dropping the solid rear axle is the Mustang's big leap out of its 1960s roots. Ford had managed over the years to massage the stick axle to acceptability, and no transcendence in the case of the Boss but untying the Mustang's rear wheels from each other pays massive dividends in terms of impact mitigation and keeps the front and rear ends working more closely together. Setting the Mustang into a corner no longer puts you into the awkward situation of serving as a couple's counselor to the fore and aft axles. Turning felt natural in the outgoing Mustang, but the rear end seemed slightly disconnected, as if it wasn't sure it wanted to follow the front. Cornering is now secure and flat and we measured 0.95 grams of lateral grip with those sticky P0s. The new Mustang's chassis is in total harmony. Read more, how we'd spec it, the perfect 2015 Ford Mustang, it's not just the chassis that feels right. The precise steering is electrically assisted, but the sensations are richly analog and not digital. This is true in any of its three adjustable modes, which largely alter weight. The Getrag's Aust 6-speed manual shifts easily and slots into gear quickly, and it feels more polished than before. It's no trouble to find a good seating position, the forward view is quite good, 
and the optional $1,595 Recaro seats seem tailor-made just for you. The interior design gets a little inspiration from the previous generation, but the materials are vastly improved and the switch gear wears aluminum look bright work. The back seats remain strictly for kids, which is a bit disappointing given the Mustang's 188.3 inch total length, within an inch of a Toyota Camry. Unlike the Camry, though, the new Mustang GT is a whole mess of fun. Large doses of maturity and refinement have entered the equation, sure, but they make for an improved and more well-rounded whole. The 2015 Mustang handles better, it's easier to live with, and it acts like a more expensive car. At its $45,885 as tested price, the GT should behave like it knows its way around a monocle and top hat, and it does. The V8 version does start at $32,925, but options drive it past $35,000 with ease. Enthusiasts who crave a louder and prouder Mustang can look to the forthcoming GT350, which likely will pack a high revving V8 and even more horsepower. For those who want to drive their Mustang every day for the next five years, however, the new GT delivers performance without brutality. Yeah. <laughs>